by bestowing upon all of us the eyes of perpetual hope for obtaining a drop of that ocean, brimming with pure, astonishing bellows. Just hear this amazing, uh, what he says here, how appropriate it is to us, and how comforting to know that who we are so fallen uh, can enter into the mood of this prayer and, and, and desire. May he thus protect us from the gaping jaws and sharp teeth of the crocodile of death. <laughs> I quoted about the Saraswati, a very wonderful book, and just check out. And you to um, fix your mind and think of the mission and to actually put that into your heart is something that requires patience, which I have to learn. So the main thing for me is to realize that the importance of actually understanding the goal, if we don't have a goal in life, and understanding that this is going to help other people and at the same time cleanses our heart to not become more selfless, then we're going to struggle so much with our mind. I remember speaking to my spiritual husband and I was and saying how difficult it was to go out every day when there's sometimes so many obstacles within the temple. And uh, he just told me very firmly, always remember Krishna, think about Krishna, speak about Krishna to others. And if that's your main goal in life and principle, then you'll be protected and everything will be all right. So to go out every day, we have to really purify our motivations to realize that if we go out with the idea of points of fame, then all these externals are just going to make us lose our desire and the mercy to continue out there. And we have to really go for the compassion to see that these people are really suffering out there and need our association by giving out true Prabhupada's books. Um, so the main point is this being fixed on the goal to really purify the motivation and to go deeper than these externals. There was um, one other story I just heard on tape by Roger Swami. He was saying how when he first came to Krishna consciousness, he only had one tape of Srila Prabhupada's and because he How is it influencing the devotional service in general? I can say that all the devotees in the temple are so happy when Sankatan devotees, I can think of uh, since I've been around for a few years and these four sitting here before I started to move to my when they come to the temple that it's Everyone wants to participate in the in the kirtan and manga life, and it just it just is such an overwhelming, shining effulgence that that actually that actually they, they bring to the temple. And you can see I've been to many temples and had such wonderful association. And these sankirtan devotees, uh, they they're the life of the river Krishna consciousness. And I remember one time uh, a few years ago. They were, when I think the law of the first started in maybe 93 or 94, and uh, me and Molly were going to make some kitchen and bread, and we had to make maybe 10 loaves. But we stayed up till 11 o'clock at night because it's, she was telling me how it's such a great service, and I could feel. We were so determined to do this, to serve the Sankatan devotees, because just by serving them, uh, it was blissful. So you can imagine when you actually get to associate with them. So I've had such a, a wonderful association. Geet Govinda, Mother Kamdini, and Mother Nidra, and people have been doing it for 20, 25 years, and you know, so so many, and they're just they're they're like from another planet. So I just <laughs> it's so wonderful now that you know actually I have a share of room with some tight Sankatan boys because <laughs> it's um it's actually. In my opinion. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't know.